Mia Hilly region in West Fujian province in a house that has the shape of a circle. In the 2020 Hollywood movie Mulan, it was Mulan's house, but that was utterly wrong. This type of house is called Tulo, which translates to earthen house. And the Tulos have nothing to do with Mulan. Today, let's visit the Tulos together and get to know their real owners, the Chinese Hakka. Tulos are scattered in almost the entire Fujian province, as well as the adjacent part of Guangdong province. Hakka Tulos are mostly located in the hilly region on the border of the two provinces. 46 Fujian Tulos, including Hakka Tulos and Hokkien Tulos, have been inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List in 2008. In this video, I'll show you about 10 Hakka Tulos from the list. I'll start with the common features of Hakka Tulos, and then we'll visit each one to see their unique features. Tulo is a castle type of building. Defensing was the top priority. Tu in English is earth. Tulo means houses made of earth. Although Tulos are also made of earth, they are quite different from the houses in Les Plato. In Les Plato in the Yellow River region, there are also houses made of earth. But the earth is so loose that it falls even with a gentle touch. The earth here is very solid because it's mixed with sugar, glutinous rice, and other ingredients. Sometimes there are cracks on the wall, but Tulos are solid in general. In a typical Tulo, there is no window on the outer wall of the first and the second floor. In this four-story Tulo, there are two rows of windows. In this three-story one, only one row. The windows are generally small and they are installed with wooden bars. Because the outer wall is thick, space was left for a person to approach the window to monitor what's outside. There is only one entrance in a Tulo for defensing purpose. Take the entrance of this 300-year-old Tulo, for example. These three holes in the threshold were for bolts of the door. There are three corresponding ones above. In case enemies set fire to the door, there are pipes above for pouring water down. There is always a wall and sometimes two in the courtyard, which is the public space inside the Tulo. In the center of the circle, there is usually an ancestor hall. Worshipping of ancestor is part of the Chinese culture and, of course, the culture of Hakka. Ancestor hall is an important part of traditional Chinese houses. In the case of Hakka Tulo, it's in the very center. In a Tulo, each family took one room on each floor. Rooms on the first floor are kitchens. But sometimes, in order to have a dining room, kitchen ranges and sinks are moved to the courtyard. Rooms on the second floor are granaries. In early harsh days, Hakka would store grains that would last for a year in this room in case they were besieged in the Tulo. Rooms on the third floor and above are bedrooms. Equality is very important in this type of house. Each room has the same size, otherwise people would fight about who get the bigger rooms. Eaves are sometimes used for sun drying farm produce. In the movie Mulan, there are similar things. These are common features that could be found in the old Tulos built when Hakkas were living in hostile environment. In the later ones, it could be different because when danger receded, convenience took priority. 
I visit more than a dozen tulos in three clusters. Many have their unique designs and stories. I'll start from this one that was built in the early 20th century. There are two circles inside this tulo. Below the middle circle are kitchen ranges and sinks. This way, rooms on the first floor of the outer circle could be used as dining rooms. Inside the inner circle is the ancestral hall. The two rooms on each side of the ancestral hall were designed as study rooms for kids in the Tulo. The other part of the inner circle is like a corridor in Chinese gardens. This is not a common design in Tulo. When surviving was the priority in Hakka's life, no one would consider a garden in their house. But in the 20th century, environment was different from the early harsh days. That's why there are no granaries in this Tulo, and there are windows open on the outer wall of the second floor. Hakka Tulos are not all in the shape of a circle. Two kilometers away from the Huayuan Tulo, there is a square one. The Hegui Tulo was once regarded as the tallest Tulo in Fujian province. Although after precise measurement, this title was stripped, its height still tops most Tulo I visit. It's hard to imagine a Tulo of this size was built on swamp. Over 200 timbers of pine trees were inserted into the swamp as the foundation, and the tulo was built on that. Someone once tried sticking an iron wire of 5 meters long into the earth in this courtyard. <laughs> Two wells were dug in the courtyard on each side of the central hall. One has clear and drinkable water, but the other has very muddy water inside. Muddy water from the swamp got into this wall because the wall is made of small rocks. This tulo reminds me of the Yanyi house in South Jiangxi province. That one has four stories and is the tallest the Hakka Wood house in South Jiangxi province. Usually, the Hakka Wood house has two stories. But this one is very special. It's the tallest one. It has four stories. This one has five stories. What are the differences between Hakka Wood House and Hakka Tulo? I'm sure some would ask this question. I kept that question in my mind during the trip, and here is my answer. Number one, there is no window on the outer wall of Hakka Wood houses. This is not the case of Hakka Tulo. Number two, in the Hegui Tulo, the structure on the top floor is no different from other floors. The corridor is in front of the rooms. However, in the Yanyi house, the corridor on the top floor is behind the rooms. It's more covered. I feel the biggest difference between Tulo and Haga Wood House is that there is no turret in Tulo, even in the square ones. Turrets are trademark of Haga Wood Houses. Usually, there's one in each of the four corners of the house. The turrets in Yanyi House are a bit different. They're located around the two corners. This is what's like inside. In Toulouse, no matter round ones or square ones, I didn't find such thing. The regular rooms located in the corners. I did, however, find peepholes on the wall above in the corners. So these are like simplified turrets in Toulouse. 
In some round tulos, there are watchtowers hanging on the top floor for the same purpose. Both Haga Wood Houses and Haga Tulos have peepholes and crannels on the outer wall. At this point, I think I can draw the conclusion that Haga Wood Houses focused more on defending. They are really formidable castles. Outside this five story tulo, there is another enclosure which has one story of rooms. I'll talk about the variations of square tulos in detail in my future video. Stay tuned. Why did Hakka build a castle type of houses? Hakka, a Han Chinese who migrated from North China during nomadic invasions and civil wars. Fertile land were all occupied. They ended up in hilly regions and were put in the category of guest household, which in Mandarin is Kujia. In their own dialect, it's Hakka. There were three reasons to build castle type of houses. One, to prevent the attacking of beasts in the mountain. Two, since Hakka were guests, there must have been others who lived in the hilly regions before the Hakkas had arrived. Arable land is limited, conflicts were inevitable. The third reason were conflicts among Hakkas. Each clan lived in a big communal house which is centripetal and exclusive. Each clan had strong coercion. A minor friction between two persons from different clans could ignite large-scale conflicts between the two clans. There are historic records of hostility and fighting between clans that lasted for generations. A tulo built 700 years ago might give us some information on the early days of the Hakka in this region. This is probably one of the oldest tulo in the world. It has more than 700 years of history, which means 700 years ago, the ancestors of Hakka have migrated here. It's not only one of the oldest tulos, but also the largest one among more than a dozen tulos I visit during this trip. It has five floors with 54 rooms on each floor. Most tulos are for members of the same clan to live, but five families collectively built this tulo and got their shares of rooms. So it was like a partnership. Partnership in business mitigates risks and solves the shortage of capital. It was probably also the reason for the five families to build this tulo collectively. The first unique thing about this tulo is that the columns are not vertical. They are leaning towards opposite directions on different floors. Some say it was designed this way because triangles are most stable. Others say the column skewed decades after Tula was built. Either way, it has been like this for centuries, yet it is still safe and solid, and there are still people living inside. I don't have enough engineering knowledge to understand that, neither did I have enough courage to go upstairs. The second unique thing about this Tula is in the kitchens on the first floor, which now have been turned into stores. Usually there is only one word in a tulo and it's in the courtyard. But in this tulo, each family got their own well. It's on the first floor of the tulo in the kitchen. Considering the size of the tulo and the amount of people living inside, one well really is not enough. When the tulo was constructed, Seven wells were dug in the seven kitchens at the back. Now there are 22 wells in total. In business world, partnerships a lot of times end up with breakups. The partnership in this tulo does not exist anymore either. Now only the Liu clan live in this tulo. The other four have moved out. I don't have any information of when and how this happened and whether it happened in a friendly way. About three kilometers away, there is a class of Tulo on the slope of a hill. 
This is probably one of the most famous class of tulo in the world. There are five of them, a square one in the center surrounded by four round ones. People compare it to the typical Chinese cuisine with four dishes and a soup in the middle. Residents in these five tulos are the members of the same clan. Their ancestor moved here in the early 15th century. He built a shelter in the place where the squaw tula is now and lived in the shelter with his son. He made a living by raising ducks on the slope of the hill. The oldest tulo in this cluster is the squaw one built in the 18th century, but it was demolished and was rebuilt. The rest ones were built or rebuilt in the 20th century. The tulos in this cluster are not big in size, and they lack some of the features of the earliest tulos. But from this cluster, we can see how Hakka built their houses in the hill. The five tulos are not on the same level. I'll walk from top to bottom. <music> Tulo really was not for artistic reason. As you can see, land is not enough to build a round one. This is a reality that Hakka are consistently facing. Land and resource are limited. I believe it was this terrace that fell that inspired the scenes in the movie Mulan. This is a tourism place, but it's not a theme park. It's real life. Hardworking Hakka were plowing in the terrace the field. In my early videos, I took you to the terrace the fields in southwest China. Mountainous indigenous people there build their houses in stilts to get extra room on the slope. Layers and layers of stilted houses cover the slope of the hill. This class of tulos shows how Han Chinese, specifically Hakka, build their houses on the slope of the hill. Similarly, the houses are on different levels. But on each level, Hakka need a considerable size of flat foundation to build their tulo. If we really pay attention, the foundation of Tulo is actually not completely flat. It's tilted downward on the slope. I guess it's for drainage purpose. This way, rain and sewage water could flow out of the house easily. But from the second floor above, it's flat. One wouldn't feel walking upward or downward. It's achieved by adjusting the length of the supporting columns. According to my observation, this applies to most tulos I've seen. 
I stayed in this oval-shaped tulo for two nights to experience the life in a tulo. It's definitely a different experience from city life. During dinner time, each family would busy cooking in the courtyard. It smelled so good. The rooms on the first floor are their dining rooms. At night, they hang out on the first floor. They're all relatives. The atmosphere in this tulo is pretty good. But I'm sure it's not always so friendly in every too long. Communal living could be inconvenient in many ways. One too long in this cluster shows how people modify the too long to get more privacy. This class of too longs belong to the Xu clan. The biggest round one was the first one built. All residents have moved out, and visitors can see every element of too long inside out here. Of all the tulos I visit, this is my favorite one. Conflicts and disputes are inevitable in communal living. This tulo that has more than 600 years of history was modified to give more privacy to each family and to make communal living more convenient. There are two circles of rooms in this tulo, and let's enter from this first circle. Rooms in the inner circle are dining rooms. This is the only tulo we've seen in this video that's equipped with separate dining rooms. Rooms on the first floor of the outer circle are kitchens. To make life more convenient, small shower rooms were added behind the inner circle. Other tulo that usually have one set of staircases, or at most of four sets of staircases. This tulo has 24 sets of staircases, so each family gets its own set of staircases. This tulo is also one of only a few places to find the granaries on the second floor. This used to be a standard design, but now can hardly be found. As population grew and the environment turned friendly, extra rooms for more people to live exceeded the need to store food. As usual, rooms on the third and the fourth floor are bedrooms. A local resident told me the secret of this tulo. When the tulo was constructed, there was only one staircase. It's located at the entrance. This way, all defensive forces could be focused on this only staircase. But as population grew in this house, one staircase for hundreds of people caused a traffic jam. Residents started installing their own staircases. In addition to having its own staircases, each family was separated from the adjacent ones with wooden boards. The hallway was completely blocked. Hey, your neighbor, you don't have to see them quite often. This is your own private space. I was told when this tulo was renovated for tourism, the partition walls were removed for the convenience of tourists. I tried to find the traces of what it was like before the renovation. Turn on your imagination and let's do it together. 
I guess there was a partition wall here. One entered the adjacent room from the side door. Lock the door here. This could be a separate unit. One used the staircase inside instead of this one. From this door on, it looks like a separate unit of two rooms. There is a staircase that back inside this unit. This could be a unit with two rooms. This could be another unit with more rooms. There's no pattern or rule of how it was divided. In six centuries, as population grew in this Tulo and rooms were passed from one generation to another, things became complicated. In order to add a staircase, a portion of the floor has to be cut off. I was surprised the Tulo could be modified structurally without having safety issues. This part is the secret of how the beams are supported after modification. The entire Tulo was divided into individual units and it was very complicated. That's why the partition walls were removed so the tourists wouldn't get lost inside. I wish they had kept the partition walls because the modification is so unique and the problem solved is so real. Now look at the staircase in Mulan's home. I'm sure it was inspired by this Tulo. Actually, the Tulo in the movie combined different elements of different Tulos, some of which I haven't seen. The crew must have visited a lot of Tulos to be able to do that. Thumb up for the work. There is another secret about this Tulo. On the wall in a room on the first floor, there is a hole. Residents could flee from this hole and run to the hills to hide. The outer side is camouflaged with the same kind of earth as the outer wall. Outsiders could hardly notice it. Among the yellow Tulos, there is a white one in this cluster. It's painted white by the steel earth inside. This Tulo was built in 1979 by the clan members living in Singapore. Hakka is a big group among overseas Chinese. This young Tulo, equipped with bathrooms and other things in contemporary apartments, also made it to the UNESCO World Heritage List because it shows Tulo can be adapted to contemporary life. I didn't go inside. But I stayed for a night in the Tulo at the very bottom in this cluster, which was also modified to contemporary life. In each room, there is a bathroom, Wi-Fi, air conditioning, and it's pretty convenient. See the stars. Good night. In my next video, I travel to the southwest coast of Fujian province and visit several Tulos there. The owners of those Tulos are Hokkien, a different group in Fujian province. Compared with the Hakka Tulos, this three-circle Tulo seems to have a reversed order, with the inner circle being the tallest one. I'll be walking on the roof of this Tulo. It's an experience I didn't get in the Hakka Tulos. What were the reasons for Hokkien to build Tulo? You'll find the answer in my next video. 
I'm Yan Yan. I make videos about sites of interest in China and histories and stories behind them. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.